Hi, welcome. Today we're going to talk about how you can connect engineering into the manufacturing and quality solution. So my name is John Kelly. I'm the vice president of product or PLM products here at Oracle. Uh, in, in with me is Patrick Dunphy from Anarch, and we're going to talk about how customers are using our solution, our joint solution, to actually bring model-based engineering in 3D into the supply chain and into the manufacturing space. So, you know, engineering has been on this path for 20, 30 years from 2D drawings to 3D drawings. And now they're starting to work on full model based engineering and model based definition. So their 3D drawings are now including a lot of information um, associated with things like PMI. So all the information needed to manufacture service and provide quality for that product is now being baked into your 3D CAD model. So again, this is called model based engineering, model based definition. The, the next term you're going to hear a lot about is model based enterprise. And what's that about? That's about actually leveraging the rich 3D data that exists in your CAD file and has for over a decade. Um, and start leveraging that into manufacturing and supply chain, creating a digital thread that runs all the way through. Um, so that's that's the vision of what's happening, right? So, and engineering's been on that path for many many years, again decades, uh, to you know create rich rich 3D models that contain a lot of additional information. So the interesting thing though is. When you, when you move into supply chain, the first thing you do is you take that 3D model and you flatten it into a 2D drawing, a parts list, a bill of material. And a lot of that information is actually created manually. So it's very interesting. I've got all this great information on the engineering side, and then I convert it into 1980 format for supply chain to operate. I'm not sure that makes a lot of sense, but that's what happens. So when you look at this, you've got all this rich information on, on your engineering side, with shapes and dimensions and tolerances. And then you manually create your manufacturing work instructions, your manufacturing bomb, and all the information you need to manufacture the product. And then you manually create your quality characteristics and inspection plans. And then you manually do the same thing on the service side. So you've got all this rich information that could automate a lot of these downstream processes and create a better digital thread. And instead, what we've got is a set of manual processes and a disconnected digital thread, right? So again, what you've got is this situation where uh, a lot of this stuff is happening and it happens over and over, right? So every time I create a new version of that um, engineering design, um, I'm recreating these downstream uh, views of that. And it's a very sequential manual process. Um, and obviously, anytime you talk in manual, you talk in error prone. It's redundant. It's got latency. So you've got cycle time issues. So I'm not sure this makes sense in today's world, right? So it's just, it's amazing how much time engineers spend just frustratingly recreating different views of their design for downstream applications to work. And again, this is maddening for many engineers and it's, it's just wasted time because all that information could be derived. So, you know, what we want to look at is, is a different model, right? So how can I manage this in a very different way? Right? So, you know, what if instead, we could actually create a more connected, seamless 3D digital thread, right? So what if we could actually start 3D enabling your downstream supply chain applications? What if you had, you know, digital work instructions and digital supply instructions and digital quality plans um, that were connected to your 3D model, right? And and provided a more robust way to manage things downstream instead of a set of flat 2D drawings or Word docs uh, for, you know, how to do your manufacturing. So that's what we're looking at. That's the vision of what we're trying to accomplish here. So 
When you look at that, you want a more integrated flow from design into planning, into manufacturing, into service. You want that digital thread to be connect, created to manage that entire flow. Uh, obviously, we've got now connected digital um, devices and manufacturing equipment. So IoT is going to play a big role in providing that feedback loop. Uh, with AI and machine learning giving us additional information on things like predictive maintenance. So the voice of the customer, the voice of the factory, the voice of the product has to flow back and forth. And obviously your digital thread is maintained front to back as you manage and you work your way through this. And it's the combination of Oracle PLM Cloud and Manufacturing Cloud with Anarch providing this model-based enterprise or 3D enabled supply chain. So, you know, when you look at this, it's interesting. So I think everyone wants to get there, but a lot of people are afraid to even start, right? So it's interesting. And, you know, you could, you can type in model-based enterprise or model-based definition into Google and you'll get hundreds and hundreds of charts like this or this one that tell you how to get there. And what we see is a lot of companies are at level two or level three, maybe, maybe a few are into level four uh, or at least three and a half. And they look at this and they're like, hmm, it's taken us forever to get from level one or two to three. So how am I ever going to get to level six? So why bother? It's too hard. Right. So, you know, that's that's the problem we see with a lot of these companies is they're they're starting to build better models. But getting all the way to level five or six seems really hard. And there's a lot of fear, right? So a lot of people aren't moving up that chain or they're afraid to move up that chain or they think they have to be at level six before they can get any value, right? So those are the kinds of things that we're going to be talking about in the rest of this presentation to sort of give you a model that says there's a way to get here, okay? And it's not as hard as you think, right? So it looks hard, but there's a way to get there. There's a, there's a concept called a technical data package, and there's many forms of these. And there's even a maturity model around this that's going to that's gonna guide you in a process that's, that's going to get you there. Uh, and Patrick's going to talk a lot about this and, and really dig into the details because some of the original technical data packages maybe didn't do everything we needed. Uh, but there's a new form, and we're going to be talking a lot about that. But let's, before we dig into the details, I just want to talk a little bit about what a technical data package is. Okay, so a technical data package is a role-specific package. So there can be an engineering package, a manufacturing package, a field service package, a quality package, a procurement package. And in that package is exactly what you need to do that function and nothing else. So in my PLM system, I have all this information. I have the procurement information, the manufacturing, the service. So it's a lot of information in one place under all the right change control and configuration management capabilities, but it's everything. So what we can do in these technical data packages is pull out just what I need for say manufacturing or for quality or for procurement or for service in a 3D enabled package that's very role specific. And again, Patrick's gonna get into a lot more detail, but these technical data packages create the thread. And there's, there's, there's ways to get here that are a lot less painful than you think uh, and it provides, again, that digital thread through the entire application. And again, different roles and different things from engineering through manufacturing into service. So what you end up with is you look at something like this, where you've got your standard PLM app activities, which are driving uh, your entire release package. So this is all the information you need to design, manufacture, service, and produce a product and procure a product and run supply chain. And it's all the information under tight change control, full version management, full engineering change management. 
Coming out of that, you're going to create these digital release packages or TDPs that contain just the right information for sales or supply chain or sourcing and just all the information, again, very role specific technical data packages. Those functions obviously operate in a now 3D enabled or model based enterprise mode. Um, and that information flows back. So you get issues and feedback. You've got IoT data coming in from your connected uh, products or assets connecting into a, a quality solution. You've got P your customers uh, providing concerns and issues back in quality and that flows back in to your PLM system providing the closed loop digital thread from PLM into your supply chain, the operation of that supply chain back into PLM to improve the product. So it's a very closed loop digital thread managing that. So what Patrick's gonna talk about now is how do you start leveraging the model-based engineering data, that rich 3D data with PMI in supply chain? basically 3D enabling your supply chain. So with that, I'm going to hand it off to Patrick and he's going to dig in and talk about how to accomplish this. Thank you, John, and a great setup. Uh, very much appreciate it. So that is the question. How do you get there? How do you do it? And who has gone there before you that can give you a pattern to follow and a path to success into the future? What we want to first take a look at and think about is really a thought question. I want everyone who's listening to this and thinking about this and talking about it amongst yourselves to ask yourself a question. Is creating and sharing technical data or technical data packages the same as having a digital thread in place? My answer would be no. And I think based on what we just heard from John, uh, you kind of see how that can be a no but it's very easy to think that I'm sharing technical data and I'm distributing information to the right people. So therefore my job's done. But what we see in recent research from Lifecycle Insights is that just because you create a technical data package doesn't mean you're doing it in a connected frictionless manner that gets you more value or makes your business perform better. And so 72% of manufacturers create technical data packages, but only less than half of them actually feel like they're effective using them. And there's reasons why. If we take a look at the why, it breaks down to communication. If communication and people being connected to that digital thread goes along with the sharing of that technical data in an efficient manner, you start to see gains. But the reality of it is there's a communication breakdown instead. Only 20, 27%, less than a third of companies are using any kind of modern collaboration techniques even when they have a supposed digital thread solution in place. And these same companies, these same people that responded to this survey, report issues related to excessive time spent answering questions about the data and a complete lack of downstream visibility into who's using the information, who's using the data, and what the current status is of the work that they're doing. And that all leads to the biggest problem of all. And that John even mentioned, right? engineers are spending way too much time on non-value added tasks. In fact, the same research reports that 40% of an engineer's time is spent finding, packaging, sharing, and explaining technical data, which when I first saw those results, I was amazed because that's an awful lot of time to be spending doing something that really isn't the day-to-day -day work that an engineer should be tasked to do. And so why is that? Well, because most of the engineers find their processes as they reported in this research, to be cumbersome, time consuming and error prone. Again, just like John uh, mentioned earlier. So as we think about this, we want to get to this connected 3D digital thread uh, world. But in reality, most companies feel more like this poor individual that's you know, locked away in the dimly lit basement using an antiquated system or two, maybe a little bit of paper left over from uh, from that era of paper-based documentation. And what you end up with is a, instead of a connected 3D digital thread, you have a disconnected thread. And that disconnected thread of information is truly the enemy of efficiency. You end up with a whole host of problems, some of which are shown here. And most oftentimes when I'm meeting with someone who's trying to solve this problem, 
they can identify with at least one, if not many of the issues that you see here on the screen. Uh, not least of which is that limited visibility to what's actually happening and a real labor intensive process to create not only data packages, but work instructions for downstream manufacturing and service personnel, as John mentioned as well. So where can we get to? What do we want to be able to do? What we want to be able to do is connect everyone to this digital thread and innovate faster. That's the objective after all. And the way that we think about that uh, with Oracle Cloud together with Anarch is that if we can connect not only the data of that digital thread, including the 3D, but also the people to that data and to each other, then we've succeeded. And really that's how this all comes together. Uh, as John mentioned, you need to connect everyone to this information and expertise that you need, which means you have to bring technical data packages, work instructions, visual collaboration, and other information about the product into the context of the product definition, rather than removing the product data from the digital thread or from their typical system of record and sharing it via email. Uh, as we see reported in some of the research that's come out recently. And that ad hoc file sharing is what needs to be replaced. And bringing together Oracle Cloud with Anarch is exactly what we can do. So more on that in a minute. But first, uh, John, you also talked a little bit about the fear or the hesitancy that people have to taking the next step or figuring out a path forward to really truly realize this 3D digital thread so they can innovate faster. And these are the typical types of, uh, I think of them as myths, but they're often the first reaction that uh, an individual will have when they start talking about something like this, where they feel like oftentimes it's already been solved. But as we look at the already been solved myth, the reality is there's still a lot of process friction. And that's why only 27% of those surveyed in the research uh, cited earlier, describe their companies as using modern tools. And the majority are still using email attachments for collaboration. So as we dug into that information a little bit, what we found is that 40% of engineering time that's being used to find and prepare data in part is being finding, preparing, and adding data to documents that are not standard engineering documents. It could be screenshots in a PowerPoint to complement a 3D model that's being shared as well. So there's a lot of data leaking out of this process as we talk to people about it. And the reality of it is, is it's a disconnected thread of information. Files are shared in ways that probably go against the process that you're trying to put in place in a lot of ways, because not every user is capable of following that process with the tools they have today. Others still think that it will be difficult uh, to get started. John mentioned this a little bit about the hesitancy to get started and take that next next step. And in reality, it's not requirement. It's not that level six requirement. It's not a requirement to have a fully model-based enterprise uh, process or strategy in place in order to get value out of the combined Oracle Cloud and Anarch solution. So if we look at it, really what you need is a 3D model. If you have a 3D model today, you can start to get value out of what we're talking about here. If you have minimally annotated 3D models, that's probably what you need. In fact, additional research shows that a minimally annotated model is the best path to success while you in parallel figure out what is actually required in a model-based definition and what type of PMI needs to get built into the 3D model to really go along for the ride. When you can add some of that information side by side in a technical data package with the original 3D model that's minimally annotated, that's really the magic moment where you can bring this all together. And then the last piece of the puzzle is that the disruption will be too severe. And so really the, with this, it's often based on prior experience with these types of projects to get you from one place to another in a maturity model of technical data collaboration. And as John mentioned before, and as I'm, I'm here to talk about, of course, is there is a path forward and everybody has a step that they can take and really those steps should be based on others in the industry like yourselves that have the same challenges and whose path you can follow. And so that's exactly what we've done. Uh, as John mentioned, we've put together this technical data collaboration maturity model that does show this path to digital thread success. 
And it starts with where most people reside today in this gray space of biocentric uh, native CAD models, uh, combination of other external documentation like Word and PowerPoint, combined with some 2D drawings and even at times some paper that remains. Uh, one of the areas that we see good success in as a first step is 3D PDFs, uh, technical data packages made for 3D PDF transfer. However, this also has limitations, and we'll talk about that more on the next slide in a moment. These next two are really where most companies are headed today. They're headed to a technical data portal rather than a discrete package, because that file-centric approach has a lot of limitations and a lot of the same limitations as native 3D CAD. It does have the advantage of only requiring uh, a reader on your desktop, but it does still require the same type of uh, computer capable of large, heavy models and all the technical complexity that goes into that. Versus technical data portals are web-based, they're cloud-based, they can be cloud native, in fact, and those tools uh, render information as it's needed and can really improve performance over time as you automate an end-to-end -end flow for your digital thread. So this technical data maturity model is based off of 15 plus years of experience working with companies and all of the different patterns uh, that we've seen over the years, combining that into a step-by-step -step process. There's a lot more detail that goes into this, as you can imagine, but this is the high level uh, version of it to really understand where most people are today and where they can get to. The integrated technical data portal approach is one where you have a fully automated process. You have systems that are integrated together, processes that are integrated together, and a lot of automation that goes along with it. Most companies like that idea, but it's important to have steps along the way that get you first value rather than aiming and shooting for the stars with all of those other bells and whistles that are needed. So most people start with a technical data portal that simply hosts the information and drives collaboration in context of the data that they're discussing. So let's take a quick look at a typical customer journey, how a customer gets from one end of that spectrum to the other. And then I'll hand it back to John uh, for a little bit of wrap up uh, as we head towards the Oracle Cloud World event. So a typical customer does start with some combination of existing legacy types of files. And that can be in a variety of different formats. But where they quickly move to is sharing some form of native 3D CAD. And they're sharing this with their suppliers. The problem, especially with a few customers that we hear from a lot, is when they share this information with their suppliers, they don't know how, who their supplier is in terms of how they're set up with technology to be able to read that information. So they've standardized, for example, on 3D PDF as a transfer methodology. But even that has a lot of file-based challenges that most companies that we talk to want to be able to move on to a new uh, pattern. And that pattern is really the file-based, uh, or sorry, not the file-based. There are file-based challenges that you, know, you run into with that 3D PDF. And the next phase of that is to get to a secure web-based content collaboration platform that allows everyone across the supply chain to access that content. So as I mentioned earlier, it's a combination of not only the data, the technical data that needs to be shared and the digital thread that needs to be connected, but the people and the expertise that engineering, for example, brings to the table and can build in with PMI embedded in the model, but not every little last detail is always caught the first time around. So being able to discuss in the context, mark up the 3D models and share expertise and information in the context of the digital thread is a key element that the Oracle Cloud and Anarc capabilities bring to the table. And where everybody is headed to is continuous process improvement for their process, not continuous process improvement for every process necessarily, but processes that can be best influenced by the digital thread connecting people and data together is really the area that we see a lot of gains for a lot of the companies that we work with. And that's reducing scrap, uh, reducing rework, reducing cycle times, reducing onboarding of suppliers and the time that it takes to get a supplier productive and all types of other uh, manufacturing processes, as John mentioned, from engineering to manufacturing to quality and out into field service. So John, I can hand it back over to you and you can wrap it up for us. 
All right, great. Thank you, Patrick. So um, I think the message is pretty clear. I think it's it's time for the supply chain to move from the 2D world to the 3D world. And it's not as hard as it looks. So at Cloud World, which is running from the October 18th through the 20th in Las Vegas, on the 18th at 11 a.m., Kohu is going to present their journey to go from a 2D uh, create a supply chain to 3D digital thread across their supply chain. So hopefully you can join us there in Las Vegas. And again, on the 18th of October at 11 a.m., we're going to go through the Kohu journey and how they have managed to do this. So, you know, just a, a, a quick preview. They actually have their suppliers using technical data packages from Anar, linked obviously into Oracle Cloud. They actually provide 3D manufacturing instructions. So little hint of what we'll be talking about. But anyways, thank you very much and hope to see you in a, in a few weeks. Yeah, thank you, John. Thank you all. Thank you, bye.